Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Prey. This is a Predator prequel movie, I guess, if you don't fit in all the Aliens vs. Predator movies. So this feels like them trying to go back and capture what was so captivating about the Predator franchise. And I'm a fan of the first Predator and the second Predator. I like Aliens vs. Predator, the first one. The second one, eh. But in talking about Prey, I'm going to give it a thumbs up, a recommendation. I love the movie. Is it perfect? Mm, that's what I think I'm going to discuss, but this is a movie that is directed by Dan Trattenberg. Screenplay by Patrick Anson. Story by Patrick Anson and Dan Trattenberg. It is starring Amber Midthunder, Dakota Beavers, Dane DeLiago, Michelle Thrush. In any case, not many big names you're going to recognize in any sense, although I think I know the Trattenberg name. But this looks like a very well done movie with lots of love and attention to detail with the other movies. So, as a whole in the Predator franchise, I love this movie and really good portrayal, gripping story in that sense. The pacing is good and is just a tad of, um, you know, a little bit new and what we always come to expect from things in these Predator movies, that they actually, you know, made it feel grounded again and going small, going uh, mainly one actor or two actors. And I'm like, you know, I'm exaggerating. It's a cast, but you can tell it's small. It's very isolated in that sense. And, uh, you know, I had a thrill. I loved it. There's the... um Issues I have with things that just make me roll my eyes and go, like, why bother? And those little things, um, you know, sort of came to my attention as I'm watching them and afterwards, because in general I try to watch something and then go around and see what people are thinking about, but I will admit that I think there was a bias of mine of hearing good things about it. Now, not looking in depth, but seeing the random... Uh, message about it on uh, Twitter or Facebook and in the general sense of people talking about it and I'm happy that they went back to this type of thing but it's I think it might be one of those Star Wars things where you watch the Mandalorian and it's fun and really good but it's, it's, it's very flawed and I think there's that part of that here Going through the movie, I was a little surprised about the way they spoke. And when I say they, I mean, you know, this is based, I think, what, 300 years in the past? Something like that. And it has to do with a Comanche tribe. And you, you get the feeling this is a more, um, well, I don't know if they're going to try to fit everything in. But I didn't get the feeling that this was a young predator going in and this seemed like it was like their first visit here and sort of testing out the hunting grounds. In any case, you really captivated the actress, the actors in this movie all nail it. The um, feeling, the just the nature of the um, environment works. It's, it all works very well and I got to give kudos to a lot of people. But like I said, there's this little thing about the way they speak and it didn't jive well with me in scenarios when you're setting things up that, you know, you don't have to be ridiculous. But these are little minor flaws. I mean, there's obviously a really good to great movie in here done pretty cheap, I'm going to guess. And that I did notice because I, in my brain, I kept seeing the uh, new Matrix movie. Um, 
I don't know what the fuck it's called. I did a podcast on it, Matrix Resurrections or whatever. And how much I like the movie, but it's a subpar Matrix movie in that it's a more of a love story with a real, um, you know, storyline that carries you through. But in other aspects of what the Matrix is, it falls short. And you know, it's kind of hard, but I, it, that went through my head with this. And what I was thinking of was, this is how you do it right. I don't know if this is um, something they plan on doing more of. Like, will they, um, you know, I don't know if it's fucking Netflix or whatever. Because I don't think this was in the movies, was it? Or some, yeah, like a Hulu thing. It, this is, uh, this is what you want to see. You want to see the Predator franchise go back to, I'm fine. But I'm also fine with the tying it into aliens and future stuff i really like the first aliens vs predator movie and the chick at the end with the you know burned scar and they give it a, a spear so in talking about how great this movie is and how much fun it is and how much you know well, a lot of fun like a you know <clears throat> within the popcorn eating this is going to captivate me way and they started making like callbacks to the movies and it didn't feel right because this is a prequel, you know, and like I said, the way they talk kind of made me feel like a, it was a modern movie, not a time period movie. And there were some things about, you know, them speaking in Comanche and stuff, and I'm, I'm all for that, but it's hard to nitpick a movie like this because it did not try to do too much. It didn't do too little. You either were, you know, with the storyline or not. But the actress, the everything was done really well, believable, except for a couple of little fight things that happened. I didn't buy it, but in the end, this is a um, great example of taking things and going back and tightening things up, making it more simple. And again, I do like the first Aliens vs. Predator movie. The second one I can go without, but I enjoy them as a, you know popcorn flick and i think this is a little more i think this is more than just hey you know we made a uh, summer spectacular movie thing this is really what they should be doing and if you get another movie like this why not set it 150 years after this tie it into a descendant of um the comanche then do another one for 50 years later and then tie it into the uh you know the um melding of western and you know colonization and all the like, put it all these conflicts in you can do this forever do it well fine you ask me oh i, I don't know if i was in the movie in the mood to watch a predator movie and you know comanche times well do it right do it well i'm on board a big sci-fi geek and this is how you do it right in that way get it Back to its roots and what makes it special. This isolation and um, realization of what you're fighting. Again, I could really, really rant about this movie in a great way. And just, you know, hit all the nice points about the cinematography. And talking about so many things that I don't like, the nitpicks helps me reevaluate it in my mind. If I've only seen it, you know, twice. And I think I might have to watch it a third time because there, I'm, there was a couple of confusing parts. And it had to do with cutting and editing, lighting. So there was that thing about me comparing it in my head to The Matrix and where it's like a cheaper, you know, way to do a Predator movie. But damn, do it right. I did a fucking podcast on a Twin Peaks fan movie. Four, over four hours long. And it's just, it was a captivating, I loved it, and yeah, of course you can watch a fan film and see it's not Hollywood produced and all that stuff. This is the great balance, you know, you're going to get me to, yeah, you only get me to roll my eyes like twice in the movie, so that's a bonus. But truly captivating performances and the actress and what's going on and how they're relating to their environment and realizing what's happening and the woman is not believed she wants to be a hunter all done well tropes galore maybe 
fine. The callbacks a little eye rolling. Um, I think she's doing the do it now thing. Do it, do it now. Uh, I need my friend Justin to do uh good um impressions of Arnold, but yes, uh, uh, does it deserve the masterpiece thing? No, I think this is just feedback from having some shitty predator stuff. Is it excellent to great? Yes, I mean this is what you want. Really tight sound movie with good performances believable um portrayals of environment and it just works and the animals and you know what is life for a comanche blend that in with the predator oh and you got a girl woman who you know wants to prove she's a hunter and it just works on every level and again you know i can come on here and just um you know, shit on anything in that aspect because it's not really anything that's perfect. But this is what you want. This is exactly what you want. You want to re-energize the franchise. This is what you do. You don't have to make it more spectacular and bombastic and spaceships. Although, I, that's another little nitpick I had. I was surprised that they revealed everything so quickly. But, you know, I'm not writing a movie, and if you do it well, fine. But I just would have made it more like the first movie where you don't know what's going on where this is just a day in life of a comanche tribe and uh, a woman's quest to prove her worth as a hunter <laughs> fine movie bring you know let's go along and then all of a sudden what the fuck that's what you know but you know this is maybe the better decision look at all the press it's getting the uh, critic reviews and stuff so I'm all for it. My little nitpicks and what I would have done differently doesn't impact my overall recommendation for the show. It's more of in talk with my friends who know me and hopefully you, my audience, in that sense of what goes through my head and what's going on when I'm watching this and I'm watching her fighting, you know, her own tribesmen and I got to go, okay, well, they're not trying to kill her. They're holding back because this is a tribe and they love her in some sense as a community. Fine. The um, over the topness of some of the predator stuff she's got to do because obviously she's got to take on the predator. I would have went with more of a Arnold preparing everything and letting us know. Again, there's some little cutscenes. It's darkness and there's a. I think they messed up in this uh, sequence of cuts and trying. You know, do it here telling a story and it's very it happens very little maybe if i watch it again it'll be clear like i'm just over overlooking something minor but minor it is because again prey is an excellent to great movie reinvigorating the predator franchise in the right proper way setting location actors the plot and storyline very you know very um easily identified and carries you along we've all watched the westerns in the past and you know what we believe things and even if it's lies or not whatever but you know i'm believing that there's a woman who's trying to prove her worth in a tribe and it's uh, how important it is to the culture that they were in and the societies they formed the comanche and you know others that this is their life and you either do one thing or another you know you're going to cook and clean and do the normal shit. And is it normal? And you want to be a hunter. You blend that with a predator on the scene and it is gold. Yeah. Do I think it's stupid that a fucking dog, wolf, I don't know what the fuck it is, coyote, Tasmanian tiger, whatever the fuck it is, attacks the predator and he, and he lets it bite him and it, he bleeds. And I was like, wait, what are they trying to show? Because I started getting worried about like what they did with the board man, I mean the Batman movie, where you know they want to have a cool scene, right? And they show him taking automatic weapons fire from like four inches away and beating people up, and it, its own logic gets tossed out the window later. This is almost the same effect where you know you see it fighting this dog because whatever. I think it's more of it's coming here, it's testing out the stuff, fine. But, you know, they're putting two to two together about 
it needed to stop in a certain spot and it skinned the snake. But what's skin, you know, I don't think you give a fucking first off. I don't think a predator, it just made me roll my eyes. Why is a predator fucking skinning a snake for? Now, the wolf bear fucking thing, all those things were fucking amazing and, you know, made me, you know, see the point in it and understand it. But making it that a predator stops and skins a snake and that gets found in, in the tracking of the, you know, the Comanche and, like, you know, you have to build up this logic that she can come to somebody's understandings. That I didn't believe. So. Is it a masterpiece of perfection? No. Is it an amazing, great movie? Yes, and you're going to love it and have fun. It's writing the track. It's course correcting in a proper way. A really good, in-depth story. Localized. It almost seems private. It almost seems the movie is made for you. In the way it makes it shot and puts you into the environment. And I did notice a couple of scenes that look way too familiar. Like... Am I crazy or in that field with the grass? Is that not the spot the uh, samurai died in the Predators movie where they're on another planet? Because it uh, looks the same. And it invokes the same feeling. So maybe that is a callback and then, you know, paying homage to it. Because I'm a fan of that movie too. It was that Brody movie. What the fuck it is? Is one of the more recent ones where, you know, they wake up and they're being transported to a planet, which I thought was fucking excellent. Um... This is great. I love this movie. Is it going to be, um, you know, in my law now of watching the movies? Without a doubt, this is so good. And again, I want to give credit for the fucking actress and people playing the movie. This is um, Amber Midunder as Naru. This is... Great. I mean, the scenes, you gotta, you know, you gotta watch it. This is definitely a recommendation of a real high recommendation. My little nitpicks are just making conversations. It's just my way of, you know, getting through a movie that you love so much. But, you know, why do they make these little decisions that make you roll your eyes, that draw you out of the movie? And it just makes it, you know, what? So it's not a masterpiece. Ooh, wow. This fucking movie is great. Pray. Setting the record straight. Getting a new start on things, do a prequel. Oh, well, you know, you know, every franchise is going to fuck things up. Terminator, it all just goes to shit eventually. No, you can do it right. This is really good. And yes, I'm going to borderline on saying great because, you know, it's how much immersed I was in it and really following it. Oh, so it's uh, 1719 it takes place in. So, 300 years ago. And fabulous. I mean, you know, I don't need to have 40 minutes on her and her family in one junk chunk. Right? This is her brother. This is her mother. This is her aunt. You, you don't need any of that because the, the movie's done so well that they have a good way of filtering it in. Like, where you see the purpose of her... In her tribe and her family or whatever, you know, her community. And how she doesn't want to be there. And during these trials, she wants to do the challenge that'll give her the respect and earn her the hunter type thing. And remember, this is the culture. This means a lot. It has a lot of weight to it. The movie does it well. And it does it well in a good pacing way where you're starting to build up suspense of, hey, you know, we're tracking a lion, but this is not a fucking lion. And then when the reveal is revealed to one of the characters, let's say, and there's a twisty twist, because there's always a twisty twist, and it's done pretty good, and there's a, you know, a revelation that there's more to this that's going on, and there are other, you know, dare I say, entities or people involved, and it's not just uh, the Comanche. Well done. I think one of the things I missed was the staple predator music i don't know why you didn't bring it in at certain points because i was really you know primed for it that scene for the predator i don't care if it's more military or whatever works you could do a different version for this i just found it you know lacking and you know so 
my only nitpick, so maybe the sound, um, not the sound effects and stuff, that's fine. The music cues and the, you know, the music is generating or kind of a little, you know, it's, it's hard to say with such a great movie, but it's just like uh, something I looked at afterwards and was like, oh, you know what, I could have used, I would have loved this to be in this scene and things like that. And again, I rant about these movies. Sometimes it's good or bad. Most of the time is decently good because I just got this, um, you know, intuition sometimes of, look, this is a good movie, but it's not for me. And hopefully that conveys through somebody's podcast. But Prey is something I'm going to recommend. You love The Predator or not. It's just a good story done well, told well, shot well. And if you want to say... Yeah, I can notice it's a little cheap. Yeah, so what? Uh, the Mandalorian, uh, the Obi-Wan show had moments of greatness and spectacular sci-fi epic on screen and then at times looked like a small cheap show on a set. This movie did it good. It did it maybe uh, in a better way. Is it per- perfect in that way? Maybe. I don't know. But when I watch Jessica Jones, a Marvel uh, Netflix show, and I look at what they're doing now. Jessica Jones is still the best written and maybe my favorite Marvel TV show. But you can they didn't have the money to do special effects. It had to be a really good story first. And isn't that what this all comes to with science fiction type movies? The blockbuster franchises that we know and love. They try to give us what we want. But, you know, it's really what we need. Give us a tight, smaller story. Make us care about the people in the movie. And like I said, the first Aliens vs. Predator movie, I did like the woman at the end. And I did like the surroundings and the trappings of that movie. And the second one is where I think they really went wrong with it. But you're looking at the first Predator movie with Arnold, the second one with Danny Glover, which I love, love the second one too. That it can be put in isolation. It can be put in the wilderness, but it also could be put in an urban setting. And can you blend them? Sure. But this movie decides to do a period piece in 1719 about the Comanche and an encounter with the Predator. With their community and their culture, it ties in so well with what you think the life would be of a Comanche warrior or the fucking knitting circle that they have, whatever the fuck it is that they do. So, props to everybody involved in this movie, really. I mean, I normally don't believe, you know, a woman can do this one type of thing or that thing in the sense of being scary, brutal, and, you know, deadly. And it's done well. It, it, it's got a... um a flair and a grounding that you don't well that you want to see more in a movie like this yes i will take my predator 2 danny glover urban chaos setting where it's fucking craziness and you know it's your predator just having all this to do but you can do these quiet or seemingly quiet isolated movies about a, a band of comanches and they're you know, struggle with life in general in 1719 and the trials that go on all through their culture and then all of a sudden, oh, what, something's hunting us and there's a little theme in there about, um, you know, I forgot what the challenge is called, the fucking Kumanjan or whatever the fuck it is and, you know, they set it up perfectly when she says it at the end, you, you know, you're cheering in a way but it's a quiet, powerful moment in the movie. Where she's like, you don't, um, well, I don't forget what the fucking thing is, but uh, no more. This ends here, uh, you know, confronting this, you know, beast. And I think in the culture in general, it's way their way of, you know, saying, you know, you went out, you hunted your lion, you brought it back, and it's head or whatever the fuck. And you say this saying to it, and it's a, you know, mantra, or whatever the fuck, uh, you know, culture thing. And, God, it works so well in this movie. And I'm telling you, it wouldn't work well with superstar actor, actresses. I mean, you mean, you might notice her from something here and there. Like, maybe she just has that face, the main actress. But just believable in the setting and in the trapping she's in. I maybe equate this to the the Marvel show. Uh, Ms. Marvel show. What did I say? I don't know what the fuck it was. But 
great acting as a kid, get superpowers, you know, I did my podcast on that. But holy shit, I mean, I wasn't really prepared for this in the way, um, you know, I set things up. Because, yeah, I've, I've watched um, the f- fucking Halloween movie or the Big Trouble in Little China, The Matrix. I think these are things that are already in the culture. This is something that's desperately needed for the Predator franchise. It's kind of come back out and clear the air of maybe, you know... Um, subpar movies that were just enjoyable fun for me and people that people were turned off to it and that's the distinction i think i try to make is yeah i had fun i loved the movie but was it did i think it was good and this is checking most of the boxes a couple of eye rolls here and there but holy shit you're gonna be immersed you're gonna be captivated by this actress her performance the ancillary side characters and the purpose of the comanche and what is this predator doing and it it kind of fits and like i said yeah you'll have a moment we're like why would a fucking predator skin a snake stop it now if it was a fucking 50 foot long fucking whatever pythons or whatever the fucking anacondas or something that would be sick okay but this was like a fucking snake like i don't know four feet long maybe i'm wrong you know, little things, but it doesn't detract from this movie. This movie's great. Watch Prey. Really, really, just kudos to everybody involved. I am so into this uh, actress and her performance in it. it. Like I said, you know, you tighten the storyline. You make it me really care. It's the environment, the cinematography, all done so well. Maybe a little short on the music cue type thing. Sound effects are just probably just as good, whatever. And maybe a couple of things that made me roll my eyes, but holy shit. This is almost a surprise for me. This is just something I saw being touted online and didn't look too further into it. Hey, I, if I'm going to fucking like Aliens vs. Predator and even the second one to an extent of just me throwing it on and maybe getting to a movie watching some cool stuff no this matters this has importance it has weight to the franchise it fits in the timeline and you know it really cements and fortifies the franchise again it gives it grounding because even if you can say you know joe you're a fucking idiot those aliens vs predator movies suck fine you know and maybe you can try to debate or argue that it, the franchise is weakened from it. Well, do something like this. Do another one like this. You don't have to. Maybe you can make it a little more um, uh, blending into society and this civilization is growing on Earth. It's part of the predator thing. In any case, watch Prey. I don't know what else to say. This is great. This is um, uh, a way to, you know, really touch back with a franchise that's sorely, you know, needs um, shoring up. It needs, uh, you know, some good movies in it, some good content and video games. People love this franchise. And it goes back and took my Arnold and Jesse Ventura, all the things that are um, staples of this franchise. You, you took it from a um big bombastic spectacular and told the isolated story and i mean isolated yeah it's a comanche tribe but it's i keep saying this and i I said it like twice now but the new matrix movie i really like that movie the writing the storyline it just is a subpar matrix movie because that's what you're expecting um one of the last rocky movies was one of the best written rocky movies but i didn't like the fight he decided to go I didn't do it like ESPN style, realistic. And I wanted the old fucking movie stuff. This does almost everything perfect. It's blended well. Actress, actors, uh, environment, um, immersion, uh, believability for the most part. It's all here. Pray. Wow, a Hulu type thing. Holy shit. I remember me and my friend were talking. We watched the... Uh, I'm in a, I don't know what the fucking show was, but it was Will Smith, another actor, and it had to do with, like, fucking 
monsters on earth and how it was part of normal life and they were joining the police force. It you was know, some crazy shit. Bright, burn, bright. I don't know what the fuck it was now. Burn bright is like a Superman ripoff. Anyway. In its betrayal, it was something I enjoyed and it was getting trashed at the time. Me and my friend looked at each other like, well, that was fucking fun. But is it fun or is it where another person's going to debate you and show you all the flaws in it? And are you honest enough to say, hey, you're right. It is a flawed movie. It's not a very well done movie. I fucking love it, though. You don't have to make that excuse for this. I don't think fans of Predator franchise in any way. This is top notch, good story, great storytelling, performances. Just, I'm captivated by this actress and her performance. From her everyday, you know, I don't want to be a fucking knitting circle cook, clean, whatever fuck. To a bond with a fucking dog. I mean, done on all these levels and well, so kudos. Holy shit. You know, you don't think sometimes you're going to get this. Um, you know, you keep waiting for the Terminator franchise to fucking sh- straighten this act out. And by the way, the Terminator, the last one where they brought back the chick was a missed opportunity because the one with the chick from Game of Thrones was fucking good. I had fun with that movie. And I enjoyed that movie from beginning to end. I remember fucking bonkers crazy that was. That's where you should have put her back in her looking at her younger self. Because I thought the actress nailed, um... Anyway, we're talking about the Terminator again. Right? But this is what these type of movies invoke in me. You hear, a, you know, a Predator movies out, and you, you're going to want that, capture that Arnold feeling. And if you're a fan like me, a flawed, maybe not great movie, but awesomely fun, the Predator 2 movie with Danny Glover. And the, maybe you're a fan of the Predators movie where they go to that planet. Because, you know, I'm guessing in a way they have their trials on Earth. They find the best, most strongest one to say, you know what, let's take them and put them on a planet. Let's see how they do on our planet. Which is where I think you would have had really Arnold in the movie. And Lawrence Fishburne was supposed to be Danny Glover. I could see that happening. It would have been awesome. But a fun movie, right? And it's the Alien vs. Predator movies that kind of muddle things. But I don't care. In that sense, I try to take these things as standalone, adding to the canon in my head of what's going on. This is comic book stuff, video game stuff. Well, how does it work so well? Here's the ingredients. Right? Limit yourself. Do it right. Don't go too crazy. Nuts. You know, tighten everything. Make it compelling, interesting. Care about the people. Because I really want to know, like, I actually want to do, I want to watch more about her and her community. And I talk about this with the Miss Marvel uh, podcast, too. Great actress, the culture that they um, highlight and stuff. You know, and I'm a fucking, I hate, I don't like religion stuff, but in Miss Marvel, they nail it. They nail everything. I love the actors, the fucking family, the whole dynamic. Do it well, even if it doesn't agree with my sensibilities or whatever and it's done well there's nothing you can argue with pray watch this movie whatever it is hulu fucking whatever but i am really excited for where the franchise can go again and it just shows you what a good movie will do because after the shit fest that was you know the star wars movies after i still give force awakens a pass because whatever but the last two were garbage, shit fest, nightmares. And I didn't care about the Mandalorian. I don't care about Ahsoka and all the. Uh, you know what? Watch Mandalorian. Yeah, it's geeky, fun, too short, lots of flaws. But the heart is there. You have fun. You get carried along with a story. Obi Wan, for the most part, really loved it. Got a lot of, out of it. Book of Boba Fett, you know. But I don't. I went into them hesitantly now and whatever. This is what the franchise needs. More of them. Do it well. I don't care if you have to tell smaller, tighter stories. It's more captivating in a way. And yeah, maybe you'll do one where it's set in the future and it's like 2,000 years from now where, where, you know, we detect predators. I don't know, whatever. But I think I'll end that here. Watch, pray. A Predator prequel movie. And I'm wondering if they... You know, I'll have to watch it again. But is that gun supposed to be the gun? Danny Glover? Like, I don't know how that all fucking ties in. But there's 
The weapons you'll see, the Predator Law, the helmet was a little weird. Isn't distinguishing himself from the other ones, but fine, okay. You know, just not, you know, a set thing on that. So, I totally recommend this. Go watch it. Um, again, kudos to the people who put this together. Uh, maybe I should be saying their names more, right? The fucking Trattenberg guy. And um, cinematography, Jeff Cutler. Edited, Angelina M. Costanzo, Claudia Constello. Music by Sarish. Whatever. I mean, this is just top notch. This is what you're supposed to do. Recognize your budget. Recognize the moment you need to put the money in. Recognize where you need to be interested in the character so you can care. Oh, man. Go watch Prey. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Laters.